Mark, we have this fun thing where I don't think we're recording yet, and then the YouTube video <laughs> comes out, and like the whole five minutes before I actually started is the beginning of the video. And I That's have no awesome. doubt that is what yeah. is happening right now. So I'm just gonna kick things off and say, welcome to IV Games Weekly. We are joined, me and Zach are joined by Mark Street, who is the hey. lead previewer at Dice Tower, welcome, which Mark. needs no introduction at hey. all. So Mark, <laughs> so glad you were here. Um, uh, thanks guys. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah. We've been friends for gosh over a year now over a year. Yeah, yeah, where where well did we first now. meet? Um, we met in person at, at Gen, Gen Con, Con, but we've been talking Gen Con, for a while we were, before that. Yeah. At least two, three months before. Yep. Right. Yeah. And then so, I guess last we did like August. a couple video calls and so mm -hmm. forth. Yeah. Last August we got to do game the game together in LA. That yes. was super fun. Um, and yeah. then amazing. Zach almost won, but got beat by Becca in Moonrakers. Yes. Becca. I was, was so was a great Becca. You know, she's <laughs> Becca's like one game up on me now. Okay. She oh. beat me, beat me in Rune Lords. I think it was. <laughs> what did you beat her at? Cause she won Moonrakers uh, and then you won the next preview. Yep. Or I won the game game? elements elements. Nice. Okay. So. But it's been great. We've, we've been, we sent you. Uh, we got some good feedback for you or from you on Moonrakers. Mm -hmm. We're, you know, we'll be, we're sending you a little bit. We sent you some like art sneak peeks of our next game. Yeah. Um, and, and you've given us some great, great feedback on stuff like that. So uh, yeah, we really appreciate you. And, and thanks for coming yeah, on the show. Thank you. Um, yeah. Well, I'm super excited. Yeah, so, definitely. So in case you actually do need an introduction, which uh, is okay. shocking. Sure. I, I mean, yeah, no, <laughs> but, 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 but no, like what, what, uh, what do you do? Um, what do you do for a living, essentially, if you want to just walk us yeah, through Yeah, so I work full time basically for the Dice Tower. Um, so, and I do, I'm their lead game previewer for doing Dice Tower previews. And we're expanding the team as well. So we have got Ella and the wow. Kirby's that are going to be helping out. Um, but yeah, it's, I love it. It's the best job I have ever had. <laughs> I, I spent a many, many years in the tech industry and I even spent many years working for fan clubs inc where i got to um do stuff for the star trek and i was gonna ask you about fan that clubs yep. yeah so um i was on set for next gen and ds9 no and, yeah. and uh voyager so when you told um, me that i was just like who who is this guy like that <laughs> that is not a normal career path for for it's anyone not. can you yeah. tell us how you transitioned into board games oh yeah so you know i actually board games and video games, both really, um, since the late seventies had my attention. So we had a place in town called A&A Hobbies and the first board game I bought my own money was, uh, I think, I can't think of the, what the magazine, it was like inside of Dragon Magazine. It was awful hmm. green things from outer space. Um, it was in the middle of the, the magazine, you could get it. And then it came out later in a box and I got that. But okay. uh, that was really like my first, like my money purchased hmm. board game. Uh, but then, you know, there was like Axis and Allies and Shogun oh, back in those days and, uh, and so forth. So, yeah, I mean, I've always been into gaming, video game or um, role, role playing RPGs, D&D, &D, Gamma World. Um, I did some of the, the superhero stuff as well. Zach, and, uh, did you, so Zach and I made board games as kids that were truly terrible. Did you ever do that? <laughs> did you ever make your own board game or is it always been? Absolutely. Oh, okay. <laughs> so do you remember the old Atari game Adventure? Mm, I remember Pitfall. <laughs> so Adventure was this uh, blocky run around in castles and fighting dragons and you were Ooh. just a square. You were just a cube. Mm. and you would pick up like a key and unlock stuff. And you have a little sword that you'd fight the dragons with. And if the dragon ate you, you just fell into their stomach as a cube. And uh, <laughs> so because of that game, I come, came up with something on my own, just not exactly the same, but with that kind of flavor in mind of using like a cube, which was dice or whatever at mm -hmm. the time, and then making all these cardboard um miniature like quote unquote miniature related buildings and figures to put into the game and it was an adventure game and it's, you had to solve puzzles and all that kind of it stuff. It sounds so. like Dicey Dungeons stole their idea yeah. from you. <laughs> 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 so but I mean going into the board game industry, you started off with board game corner, right? Did I get the name right there? Yeah, right. So this is the funny thing. So with uh 
the Dice Tower. I was a big fan. And, you know, back when I started with the Dice Tower, it was, you know, Sam and Z were still doing a little bit of stuff here and there, but it was really like Ryan Metzler and um, uh, Dan, the Game Boy Geek. They were really kind of like the other reviewers mm-hmm. on the channel, right? So at one point, Tom said in a board game breakfast, hey, if you want to review games, let me know. And I'm like, okay. So I, I sent him an email and I copied my buddy Randy, who was my co host. And I didn't tell Randy I was doing it. Oh, no. I sent him the email and said, yes, we'd like to do that. And, <laughs> and, Tom, and Tom said back, well, I'd have to see something. And so Randy and I thought it was like a demo, right? It wasn't mm-hmm. actually going to be airing or anything. So we grabbed a game that we played all the time, which was Walk the Plank with the, with the family. We played that mm-hmm. a lot. And uh, so we just quickly did a video. And it, when I say quickly, the first this first video was not quick. It would, took us forever. Yeah. Uh, how, however, the Board Game Corner name and our tagline was from that first episode. Um, and we just quickly came up with those things. But filming was definitely interesting yeah. <laughs> for that first time. And that video still lives. So Tom took it and just aired it. I'm like, oh, I guess it was oh, good we're, enough. We're wow. doing it. It's, we're, we're famous. <laughs> We're board game reviewers. So, it's great. It was so funny. Um, yeah, it's, it's so rough to go back and watch. You can go see it still. Um, I am going to blackmail you with it for sure. <laughs> yes, you are. Um, so you did a lot of the, you did almost all of the Kickstarter previews for a while, and now you have a whole team doing that, right? And yes. So uh, about, where are we at? Like two and a half years I've mm-hmm. been doing previews wow. now, and uh, like pushing 300 previews at the moment. Wow. Um, That's yeah. a lot. There's a it reason is. I go to you for board game advice. On this. Like, <laughs> do you like this art? Because you've seen all the art. You've, yeah. you've seen, all, seen all of it. And uh, it was funny. Everybody's talking about the, the new hotness, right? Well, I'm looking at stuff that you'll be talking about in a year. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's true. I, I like that too. Because it's like you get an idea of what's coming, what the trends are, and like where where kind of like the hot mechanics are. And so it's really cool to like just bug you for five minutes and be like, all right, this is a mechanic we're thinking about. Have you seen this? Is anyone else trying this? So it's, it's really nice to pick your brain. Right. Speaking of previews and reviews, though, our special topic today is yeah. previews and reviews. Go <laughs> figure. Um, so Nice segue. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well done. Well when, <laughs> when I got started in this industry, which was basically two years ago, I didn't actually know the difference between a preview and a review, which seems so obvious now. But just in case the audience also does not know, Mark, could you give us yeah. a breakdown on the difference between a preview Definitely. and a review? I actually get this interesting. I get this question a lot, right? So um, reviews, you know, uh, for one, reviews, when I, at least when I do reviews, I need to play a game at least three to five times before I do mm, it. Wow. For, for starters. Yeah. And then, you know, there's some hard... Um, especially in the, at the end of the video, there's some real detailed and potentially, oh, I really didn't like how they did this, or I really like this. So potentially there's some real criticisms that can happen, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, there's always a score that we give it, you know, based on the one to 10 kind of rating. And yeah. for a while, the board game corner score was four because it was four corners. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it's a real score, right? And then, I feel like too that the the middle of the video is maybe a little more detailed and maybe a little more uh, strategy bits here and there about yeah. oh you know if you get these two card combos and you can do this in the game that's pretty effective you know so you might throw a little bit more of that in there for a review but then go over to the preview the preview is definitely more of an overview um, I like to call it I, what I tell people when I meet with them is that. Um, I want previews to feel like, hey, I played a game last night. I'm just going to tell you about it. Yeah. So uh, yeah. they're supposed to be like a show and tell piece, right? Yeah. Um, maybe, and heavily relying on theme, for me anyway. Um, I like that a lot. And, uh, you know, I might say, okay, you have 10 actions on your turn. And one is like moving, you're getting cards, you know, you're doing these. But it's more of that kind of generalization um, instead of diving into, well, if you get these three cards and you put them in this order, this happens. Yeah. You know, I don't never dive into that deep of it. And one of the reasons we do this overview was because early on I was almost doing how to plays and I still get comments. Oh, you got that rule wrong. <laughs> and so I said, well, that's the way it used to be. Yeah. yeah. So when that, I did yeah. the review or preview, that's the way the rule was. <laughs> exactly. So also with so that preview- was. 
a oh, reason for it to be sorry a reason for it to be that higher level and now there's some smaller games that you can't really help but talk about everything yeah but um the other thing is that in when i do the in summary bit i still will say maybe one or two things that i like about the game mm-hmm. but i never give it a score and i never say back this game i right. never say buy this game and then i always finish that with but if this looks like something of interest to you i'm sure they'd appreciate your support yeah i love that you do that because i mean previews really come down to they take the preference out of it mm-hmm. like yes. when you review a game you're talking not only about the game as a whole but you're also talking about your preference. Like, I don't like this game because X. And that might be a mechanic, it might be the theme. Uh, A game we're gonna talk about today is not gonna be my favorite because of the theme. Sure. (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm curious, Mark, like, can you talk a little bit about your philosophy for reviews in general? Um, I was listening to a podcast with um, Pete Wells, who's the, the restaurant critic for the New York times. Um, and he was kind of talking through, um, I don't know, like his kind of philosophy. I I thought this was so interesting in New York where there's just so many great restaurants. He's like, I'm really just looking at the top, you know, 1% of all restaurants in New York. So like, even if, if you're just getting a review from us, like that's like, you're in, you've made it like you're in that upper echelon. So in their perspective, it's like this, like even a one star, you're still in the top 1% of restaurants. So I'm curious how you, you look at that with the, just like abundance, the abundance of, of games that come out every year. There's so many. Right. And so that, and to some degree, it's the same it is for me. And I haven't done any like reviews straight up in a little while now, but Mm -hmm. when I was actively doing reviews, it was really like, okay, there's so many games. I'm going to review games that I'm probably going to like. Yeah. yeah. So I'll gravitate and I say, okay, these three look really interesting to me. And they weren't always, but um, I generally would, you know, obviously move towards something that I was pretty sure was going to be something I would like. So uh, there's that, right? And mm-hmm. then I also feel like, you know, any review is just straight up an opinion piece, really. Yeah, sure. Because it's just like movie reviewers. Like yeah. um, movie reviewers, there's only certain people that I will listen to or look at because they generally like what I like. Yeah. That's a good point. So, um, do you think that's, And I feel like board game reviewers the same way. Do you think that's why we're seeing more reviewers in the space? Like, is our reviewers starting? Because they're like, oh, I, I like this game and this review of it's pretty well, bad, but I like it for these reasons. Right. There, there could be some of it, but I really do think like there's just this boom that's happening, continually yeah. ongoing happening. And, uh, and you know, especially current state of the world, people are home. Hey, let's do some video, you know? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So uh, there's some of that happening, I'm sure. It's not but like we I started. I love the fact a- that so many people, I, was, I, just, I love the fact there's so many people who really um, are passionate about it though, that they want to yeah. take the time because it's a lot of work to make these videos. Don't, you know, oh, yeah. it's not just something oh, I'm going to sit down with a book and make a video. No, <laughs> <laughs> those videos at least probably don't get many, very many views. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm curious, do you think that there is a place for, um, uh, back to the, uh, this Pete Wells interview? I don't know why this jogged my memory, but mm-hmm. he's like, I only really do one or two negative reviews a year. Um, Mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting because I feel like um, if you're thinking like movie critic standpoints and like doing movie reviews, it's like a ton of negatives, but it's like kind of our perspective on this show is like, you know, our, our angle on this is more of as, as makers. Right. And, and as makers, I feel like I don't want to just take a dump on somebody's efforts ever. Like I I don't ever want to speak poorly about those efforts, but you're, you're more (laughs) in the, the critic realm and, and, well, yeah. you're more in the like the journalist side of things where you're you're talking about games. So what's your kind of take on that? And and then I guess ultimately the question is, do you think there's a place for negative reviews of games? Yeah. So as far as negative reviews of games go, I don't know that I've ever felt like this com- this whole game is terrible, right? Mm-hmm. I I like when reviews have pros and cons, like, oh, this didn't really work well for me or this mechanic seemed broken or this was overpowered, but these other three things are really fun. You know, that is a more balanced negative review in my, in, and the thing about negative reviews for board games is that you have to invest so much time mm-hmm. into playing and filming where a movie critic goes to a movie for two hours and then writes something. Yeah, right. right. That makes sense. So uh, you have to really weigh the pros and cons about, okay, I'm going to spend three days on this. Do I really want to spend something that I'm going to hate 
mm-hmm. no, I'm going to go look at this game that I'm pretty sure I'm going to like, yeah. you know? Um, so let's, let's, at least for me, that's, that's a huge thing for me. Yeah. Let's chat a little bit about kind of reviews and previews and their role in launching a game. Um, so yeah. when you look at someone like Stonemeyer games, by the time it goes to market, that thing is done. And so they're able to send yeah. out finished copies of this game to get reviews. With Kickstarters, that's not the case in a lot of times. Like, in order to get a beautiful finished copy, you've got to order 2,500 of them. Yeah. And so yeah. there's a lot of rule changes that happen through playtesting, and a lot of that kind of stuff happens after the Kickstarter. You want the game as close mm-hmm. as possible before the Kickstarter so you can actually get some good things done. Moonrakers, we kind of did a, a split. We had some actual reviews. Um, one of them was um, some like written articles where that people reviewed it for like kids, adults, and like really serious gamers. Um, but for the most part, most of our things were either previews or playthroughs. Um, do you do you have any like guidance for maybe people that are like starting like a project or like want to you know go get a review by you or someone else for their Kickstarter and the, the value in that and then follow-up question to that is it possible or even worthwhile to get that review beforehand so this is the thing right so one of first of all let's start with the prototypes right so the thing there is that i'm always amazed that some folks like the little guy out of their house sends me this incredibly polished (laughs) just done looking game yeah and i'm like wow this is amazing this looks like it, I just bought it at a store. And then some of the bigger publishers will send me something that's been slapped together. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, I don't, you know, cause with the, you know, like game crafter for one, I mean, you can order like 20 or 10 copies of something and have it look pretty polished. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, and that's one of the big things I stress for previews is that when I get on um, the interview with folks, I'm like, Hey, you know, this is going to be a video that lives. Send me the best yeah. possible quality because it's, you know, we want camera ready prototypes. Really. Yeah. So, um, and it's doable today. It's not that you have to go off to China to get something printed and, uh, and get, like you said, 2,500 copies to get a prototype. I mean, there's alternate, alternate paths now to do at least something that looks polished Mm -hmm. you know so and you mentioned like that kind of video living forever and i mean just the moonrakers videos with dice tower your review got i think around seven thousand views our live play with the dice tower guys in florida got around seven thousand views like that's a lot of views that's going to live for a while well and even even with like just speaking to that like making those early prototypes just be of really high quality like even in testing, because we do a lot of paid advertising and you get to see like what's working and what isn't. And photography in general, like works so much. I mean, we, we try like crazy animations. We do like CG renders. Yeah. We do, you know, we, we story related stuff. No, it's like, it's the photography of your prototypes of the that box. like <laughs> do really well. So I think like, yeah, like to your point, I think it's, it's, it makes a ton of sense to invest in those like early, yeah. early prototypes. It really does. And plus if you're, you know, you're taking it to places to show people at conventions, whatever, get togethers, mm-hmm. whatever you're able to do. Um, that presence on the table, yeah. as opposed to like a print yeah. and play or some, you know, you're going to draw people to look out. Oh, what is this? You know, you know? Yeah. And that's, so, that's kind of why we were, we've been a little bit hesitant to do like print and plays just cause I, mm-hmm. I don't know. There's something about that, like first impression yeah. that you never get yeah. back. That's um, right. Yeah. And, and I have to imagine that that goes into a lot about how you feel about the game. Right. Yeah, it enhances. It's like you know being on a, a set that's that's really fully built out, mm. as opposed to something that's little like half a room. Mm-hmm. It, the immersive, how much more immersive it is uh, to have the game look done and polished is so much better, right? I mean, just it, and then it also gives me because I like to do, as you guys know, I like to do shots at the table where stuff's close up, yep. angles and shadows. I, I use shadows all the time. Mm. Um, just to enhance the look of things on the table. Um, so, you know, a print and play just doesn't show off as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially if there's like little cut out of paper. Paper, literally supposed paper, to yeah. be cardboard, you know, money or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just rough to show. Yeah, so. I mean, the Moonraker's box, the, the prototypes that we had made were actually like an inch shorter than oh, the yeah. end game. Oh, they're quite a bit different than the, the production copies, but they still look nice. They so. still look nice. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, I still have it right over here. Actually. Oh no! Way. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We're we're really excited for you to get your your final production copy. Yeah, I can't wait. They've got the gold foil and all that on them. So I'm yes, really, I'm pumped about. I that. sent pictures to Becca when you when you nice. showed me. That. Oh, nice. <laughs> She's like, that's amazing. Speaking of Becca, yeah, like I want to talk about that too because that's not a review or a preview. It's a, a live play and mm-hmm. and a little bit of a yeah. how to play. She also did, mm-hmm. but yep. that video got I think below 30,000, but right around 30, there. Right yeah. around 30, yeah, right. Um, And 30,000 views, sorry. I keep just saying 30, and Zach's like, wow, 30 views. <laughs> a, whole, a whole 30 a views. A whole 30 views. Yes. I said seven and a half earlier, and he was like, how did we get a half view? Um, I have a funny story about views in general. Go for real it. quick. Like, I got to tell you, so my, my co-host, Randy, his, I think it was his niece, and she's like, oh, yeah, I put a video up, and it got like, you know, 120 views, and Randy's, Randy's like, "Oh, really? That's that's great." Like, well, how many video, how many views does your video get? And he's like, "Only like 10,000." Oh. And she was like, oh. "What?" <laughs> yeah, that's like the difference so between good. when I'm doing my own social media and then when I'm posting for Moonrakers. It's like, "Oh, I got two likes," and then it's like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> Moonrakers has more friends. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, no one sorry, sorry to derail you there. I yeah. Just... Oh no, no. But this is this entire show is about derailing each other. So. Uh, good, no, good. no worries about that. Um, and did I finish the question? Your first, li- your I think last my question other was question finished. was like, oh, so pre- previews are just so important for Kickstarters. Like, yeah, people can you know read the text and look at the pictures, but they need mm-hmm. some kind of tangible, like, well, tangible is the wrong word because it's all intangible. Yeah, but like watchable. someone uh, else holding it, yeah, showing yeah. you, mm-hmm. yes, like walking you through the components and a little bit of the gameplay style, mm-hmm. without telling you what to think. Right. And that's really, really important. But other people want that review. They want someone to say, this is what I thought about it. But right. that's really hard to do for a Kickstarter in a lot of cases. Yeah, and one of the, the tactics that I use for previews too is that like, um, and most recently I did a, a game that was a battle card game called Cleos, and it has these awesome amounts of dice that you're going to be potentially throwing. And um, so that's one of the things I like. I like dice checkers and I mean, mm-hmm. the game is deeper than that, but the, the way I'll approach that in the video is that, uh, if you know anything about me, I love lots of dice in games, you know? <laughs> so it's not specifically this game, but I just like that happening in games, you know, that kind of thing. So it, um, when, when you yeah, said, so I try to make it more general turns. Sorry. I try to make it more general terms. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I, when you said you love chucking dice, I had a flashback yeah. memory to you chucking a Moonraker's dice over yes! your shoulder because yeah. it oh was gosh. so mean to you that during the game. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, you could not get the rolls. I think you rolled a I two. I could not. Nothing. Yeah. It was so ridiculous. You rolled ridiculous. the worst hazard I think I've ever and seen. And usually... Usually dice like me, so it was very puzzling. Not this and time. then and and Be- Beck and I talked about that in the preview then, and I said, and the dice don't like me, and she's like, yes, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they do not. Um, so. so I'm just really excited to one continue working with you for reviews and and mm-hmm. game yeah. game and and all that kind of stuff that we can do in the future. That'd um, be awesome. If someone wants to explore working with you, how yeah. how would they do that? Do they just go to Dice Tower? Yeah, then go to the Dice Tower site and you can submit stuff there or it's just mark at dicetower.com and I'll, I can get emails off to wherever they need to be. Uh, but l- usually Lindsay is our marketing manager, Lindsay Friend, and her and I uh, work on everything together and I work with the team mm-hmm. um, and uh, we just make sure that these are all um, going to the right people and folks get to, you know, on the team get to choose sometimes. Sometimes we have to just, oh, we got to disperse this stuff, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, so, but just send me an email and then I can, I'll get it off to Lindsay and she can send off like uh, the, our um, sales guides. So you can check it out mm-hmm. and all the things we offer. So. Yeah. So uh, pigeon tailing right off of that. So pigeon tailing, pigeon tailing, dovetailing, uh, <laughs> dovetailing, pigeon tails. <laughs> I think pigeons. that's a new term now. I feel like, like there's a board homing, game in there. Homing Homing pigeon? pigeon tails. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know what you're saying. Pigeon dovetailing <laughs> off of that. Um, <laughs> Reviews cost money. Previews cost yep. money. Everything costs money in your life. Um, I will say that if you're doing a Kickstarter, and most of you won't be, but I don't know why I'm sharing this anyway, it's going to cost money, but it's worth it. Like You yeah. cannot have a Kickstarter page without a third party valid, validating it in some way. And and that I mean, validation you, you isn't can. even... You can't. Well, you, you can. It's just not going to go well for you. Wow. Uh, so I would say one like of the threat. big... Th- Sorry. Right. And one of the big no. One of those big things around that is that what you guys understood so well was that 
this is a marketing campaign. Oh yeah. It's not about the first 48 hours, like lots of people might think, uh, but you guys understand marketing. And so you understand that you were doing stuff six or even eight months before the campaign. Mm -hmm. And then you were talking and doing new stuff throughout every week of the campaign. Yeah. It's not about the first day. It's not about the first couple days. Yeah. It's not about the last two days. You know, it's an ongoing thing. That's how marketing works. That's, so, yeah. that's a really so, good thing you brought up, Zach. Sorry, I'll let you go in a second. Yeah. Previews do not take a week. They take a long time. You have to get your game yes. in, in, a, in a line of people that want previews. Do not reach out to Mark the week before your Kickstarter goes live. Yeah. That will not that work. Just, what are you going to say, Zach? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, like, to, to your point, it's like, yeah, everything just takes so much more time than you think it would. Previews, yes. but, like, but also this, th this is a great point that you bring up as far as, like, just the amount of, like, time you need to give everything. Like, y you need to be mm -hmm. thinking about things, like, well before. I think, like, with Moonrakers, we learned that. It was just, like, I, I don't know what our original goal of launch was, but it was, like, oh, like maybe six months before yeah. we actually ended up launching it. And so, you know, we've, we've learned our lesson this time around. We're starting, Hopefully. we've we've got a master schedule of, like, every social post um, for our next game starting technically today but i don't know if i'm gonna be ready for that but um yeah, it's yeah, like but but going through for the next how long is that schedule 90 days or uh i don't even know October. um don't yeah know. a 90 day schedule so it's like it, it it is remarkable how like much like prior planning goes into it and and it's kind of like this you have to do you know calculated risks because totally you're going to risk especially if you're putting money into ads versus just organic posting if you don't have a large following, you're gonna need some ads in order to, to generate some interest. If you start those ads the day your Kickstarter goes live, I would say that you, they will have some effect, some of an effect, but for Moonrakers, the ads that we did beforehand were what made us fund on that first day because we had oh built gosh. up excitement, yep. we had built up interest, we had thousands and thousands of people signed up for emails for that first day launch. And so you have to kind of build that mm -hmm. that excitement. Yeah, and, and I also think like what we're saying right now is like I think it might seem maybe a little bit daunting for someone who's just oh, working on a yeah. game for themselves. Like there are different like levels of these things. Like I don't want you yep. to think that you need to like have all of this ahead of time. Like like because we're a, a game or a company and we have to like hit certain expectations for our games. Like that's why we're able to put so much into this. But we also need to put that much into it because we need to get a certain amount of return on the investment yeah. that we put into these things so and mark you see that at all different scales right like you see people yeah. who are just like a solo game dev um all the way up to i mean like massive companies way bigger who, than us yeah yeah way bigger than us and so you kind of yep. get the gamut uh, of those things yeah and i would even say that uh, back to again the the smaller guys are a lot of times will just have everything ready and prepped and ready to go um and not always true with the larger. Um, not that it's never, I mean, it's, but there's been some surprising moments and I'm not gonna call anybody out, but I'm like, oh. <laughs> do it, no, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, wow, that's all I'm gonna get for this preview. Okay, that works, we'll just do something we'll, different. You know? Yeah, we'll wing it. You know, We'll wing it. So um, yeah, I've just, I'm always impressed with the little guy, how much you can tell that it's such a huge passion for them. Mm that they want it to be the best it can be. Yeah. Um, and I think I like the fact that I get to help the little guy out as well as I'm just continually, like I said, impressed with the quality of what they produce. Yeah. So I, I, oh, there's what, you, you, you cut me off. You, it was me, it was my <laughs> uh, uh, No, I was, uh, I'm, I'm curious, like you you probably, definitely more than anyone I know, um, you, you've played more games, you've pre previewed more games than pretty much anyone. So you have this like, this broad sweeping perspective, especially when it comes to previews. But yeah. there's, because there's so many, like what would you say, and maybe over the past like year, what are, what are some of the ways that, people have really impressed you with these kind of like early copies. Like how, how are people standing out to you in these previews? So again, the, the biggest thing is just that when I open the box, I'm like, Oh, mm. did, this looks like something I just bought. You yeah. know? Mm. So there'll be, instead of like flimsy cardboard, there's a, a hard cardboard player board that actually has recessed spots to put your cubes in. I'm like, no way. Cause some even like established publishers don't even do that for yeah. final published games. Yeah. Um, and it, obviously there's a cost associated to doing that level of 
Oh yeah. You know, totally. production to something. So you get it, you know, you're, you're making mass quantities of something. It's going to be expensive to produce that level. Um, but you know, I'm always, that's one of the big things. I'm just shocked when I open it. I'm like, wow, they put their everything into this game mm-hmm. and it might be huge amounts of their life savings and stuff too, you know? Yeah. Um, but that's one of the big things is that I'm always like, wow, this is way beyond. And I even say it in a lot of the previews that I've said things like, wow, this game looks done already, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> so that's like what, and then there's the miniatures, right? So yeah. this is the other thing you can get their standard printed um, miniatures. I get a lot of those and I try not to get too close because obviously they're a little rougher, sure. uh, but some of the um, I've been really amazed with, that I get some miniatures again that are looked, com- they look done. They're like the molds have already been made mm-hmm. and it's just finished. And so that's happened a handful of times as well. And I'm like, wow, that's super because that's expensive to do, especially for a prototype. Mark, you know? I'll never forget when you and Becca called me over at Game the Game and you kind of like, cir- we circled up kind of close and you kind of were like, you guys aren't going to ship the game with these terrible little bags. Are you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> And we were like, no, 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 no! Like we're getting a, we're getting an insert. I feel like I feel a lot of pressure mounting for what we send Mark for our <laughs> yes. next, for our next preview. Like I'm like, I'm like already uh, thinking like, well, like maybe we need to up our game a little bit. Yeah. With these inserts, like sending him like solid like gemstone minis. Or oh something, yeah, yeah, you know, it's just that like, would yeah. be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the money is pure gold, Mark. It's, don't spend it. <laughs> yes, we need it back. Um, all right, so talking about you know, cool games. Cool games. We're excited Ooh, about yes. some games that are coming out. Zach, we're going to start with your game. Okay. Um, so, Catapult Kingdoms. Yes. Um, I tend, well, this is your game, but I'm going to talk for some reason. Uh, I tend to not like dexterity <laughs> game games, now. but I'm excited about this, so take it away. Uh, oh, okay. I was about to lay down and oh, okay. take a nap because um, <laughs> I'm am, I am clearly not needed here. Um, no. Uh, Catapult Kingdoms. So I, I I like this game because I have. Um, it's gonna sound like a dig, but it's really not. Like I I have small children, um, and now, like, th- this game is not for small I, no, children. Are you kidding me? This game, like this is oh. okay. So I'm in this like season of life, right? Where like my my friends are starting to have like kids that are a little bit older, and they want something to be able to play, sure, but sure, also sure. like like this just seems like something that like anybody can have fun with. Yeah. It's like got like a little bit of like dexterity. There's like a building element to it. Mm-hmm. So to give you like just a brief um, like overview, essentially you're building up these towers um, with pieces that that come together, essentially a little castle. You've got um, miniatures, that figures that kind of st- you stack and you place them all over the place. You pick your weapon and you literally fire a, um, a catapult or- Yes, uh, that's why I'm ballista. so excited. Yeah, it's gonna, <laughs> it, it, it just looks so fun, but it, it literally is like, um, something I think you could play with with anyone huge age range, which like yeah. I'm like craving right starting now. And it also seven, looks fun though. for me. Starting at seven. Seven. Ah, my 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 oldest is three, so four. I'll buy this game. Oh. We can play it four years. Well, I mean, yes. it's a Kickstarter, so she'll be four by the time it gets here. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say seven, but no, yeah. no, yeah, no, be, no that would be yeah. oof, uh, that'd be a little no, rough. No. Um, great play time. Yeah, what like is 10 that? Ten to fifteen. Ten, yeah, ten to fifteen. Right. Um, um, the only the only downside is two players. But I mean, let's be honest, we need more two player games in our lives. So true. The, uh, the rule book almost implied that there was a way to play with with more. Oh. It seemed like you could choose kind of who you wanted to target. Maybe you just need multiple that's cool. sets. You might, and I could be getting oh, that, that wrong. But I did read the rule book, so that would make sense. That, uh, well, that you know, since sense. you mentioned rule books, let's talk about that real quick. Yeah, because. I get a lot of really rough <laughs> rule books. Yeah, and that's sure another thing that impresses me is when I get a rule book that looks done, mm-hmm. you know, and that doesn't happen very often. That happens seldom. Mm-hmm. So that's also like a trigger to go, Oh, they're, they mean business here. You yep. know? Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, we're in that hole right now on the next game that we're working on. It's just like, that is literally the last, like, cause it's just yeah. like, we have to get all these things to print. And so the rule book ends up being like kind of left out, yeah. Until yeah. like the very end to get formatted and stuff. But it's because yeah, it's a you, big don't, deal. you don't have to order it so far out. You can yeah, order it yeah. from any printer in That's the United true. States. Well, yeah. The, the crazy thing is that I'll get rule books that say, oh yeah, grab this token, grab that token, and then put them here. And I'm no pictures, no oh, nothing. No. I'm like, I don't know which token is which token. I <laughs> which mean, obviously to- if it's money or something that makes sense, but yeah. if there's like 
some generic symbols. I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that seems like it might be hard. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, so I looked at the Kickstarter page. It is four players with two, yeah. two okay. copies. Cool. Yep. Yeah. It is. Okay, good. Yeah. I, I like that. That's, that that I, seems to make a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, Definitely. it seems like I, I feel like that adds like a little bit of depth to it too, which would oh, be yeah. nice if you were able to play with four people, just like choosing who you're going to attack and I would, when. I would um, love that because then there's table dynamics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like a whole new a element to the game. Social pressure. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. To gang up on you. I have one person left. You got to attack Zach instead. No, no, to gang up on yeah. Austin. That's how we play games here. And this, love that it. is how we do it. That's why I love our next game. Is you can't gang up on me as easily because you don't know who I am. Uh, that's it's one one spoilers and two. I always gang up on you. you, you don't, <laughs> my only goal in life is to beat you in these games. And I'm it sure really that, sucks. Mar- I think that's a solid goal. <laughs> yeah. Like no. I mean, <laughs> the problem is that's the whole Discord's goal as well. So I just can't win <laughs> ever. Yeah. And Austin gets a little feisty. He does. Do. He's a little testy. Testy. Sometimes. When I don't Let play the way win. he wants me to. <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, that's in chess when you always do queen trades, and it makes zero sense oh, for yeah. you at the time. Mark, do you play chess? Oh, you know, I in in high school, I was part of the chess uh, club. He's oh, gonna nice. beat us bad, I think. Oh, yeah. we should start. We should start playing on. Um, <laughs> we play on chess.com. Do you play on chess.com at all? It's an app. I have not. No, oh, I've it's great. And so I am so far removed from it. I'm probably not that good anymore. But, I have oh, a higher. Yeah, we're, we're terrible. Don't I worry. have a higher win ratio than Zach, but <laughs> no, it's not because I'm better. It's not because not. I'm better. It's because you time out half your games. Oh yeah, that's definitely true. I yeah. Do. Well, I like think I like to think about my moves. For a really long yeah. time, and um, but if you ever play Austin in chess, just just queen trade immediately, and he will rage quit. It's wonderful. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, so we I think, we're, I like, I think um, we might be done. We're, we're a little little far away. Yeah. Kingdoms yeah. looks great. Um, it's doing yes. really well on funding. Too. Yeah, it really yeah. like people it, are. Like into we it. talked about table presence. This this game has it. Yes. Oh, it does. Yeah. Yeah. And it was its goal was fifteen k. I would tell whoever I can't remember who made this game. Maybe raise that next time because you you blasted it so oh, far seriously. out of the water. Like yeah. I've I've got the soft spot in my heart for games where you build things. I yeah. mean, really. I mean, we made Moonrakers, which the whole like whole feeling was like building a ship, building a ship and going on yeah. missions with your friends. But then like thinking about games like Castles of oh, uh, Mad King Ludwig, Mad, Mad King Ludwig yep. like building a castle. Love that. Or, so good. Um, I always uh, suck at that game because I want to build cool rooms next to each other versus going yeah, yeah, for yeah, points. Yeah. But yeah. or like Galaxy Trucker. Oh, um, Galaxy um, Trucker. So yes. Like like this kind of like taps into that for me. And that's mm-hmm. why I was like, Ooh, this is fun. But with physical pieces, m- more yep. games like this, please. Yes. And I more love like dexterity this. games in general, because again, the reason I want to get around a table with people is to laugh, have fun, oh. generate, generate lots of conversation. Mm-hmm. So that's why the bigger, deeper, heavy Euro games don't really work for me always because oh. there's a lot of silence at the table. Yeah. And that's not why I get around a table. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> maybe not great transition to this well, next game well, no, no, because <laughs> this is a big, a bigger yeah. and heavier well I think that's why we get along with Mark so well is because I think we have a similar philosophy do, on like why we're getting around a table to play with each yep, other yep. and that's like why we design the games that we design is like to like spark that like we don't want just like a bunch of people sitting around a table quiet um, yes me on so. the other hand though I also love like games oh you do yeah, deep yeah. Strategy. Well, yeah we play yeah. Twilight Imperium I well, also, Twilight Imperium I'm, has a lot of okay, table discussion that's fair it does lots of table discussion yeah all right moving that's, on yeah. to I'm gonna say this wrong but I'm gonna try uh Daimyo you think that's right I think that's right yeah um I'm excited Daimyo Daimyo I don't know Zach don't thinks Daimyo um I well first off all I was like this artwork and this box are really cool if you look at the side of the box it yeah, actually kind of like has an art that goes across the three boxes, which is really neat to me. Yeah, it's nice. Um, and then it has this like futuristic samurai feel to like the overall artwork, which is really, really fun. It is a big game. Um, they have right pretty early on the, the Kickstarter page, just like a layout of all the pieces. And I mean, they're just minis galore and then like meeples and buildings and tokens and cards. And all of them are really highly detailed. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. And then it has some really interesting mechanics because it's like a dice drafting deck builder with some worker placement resource yeah. management type stuff. Yeah, like they have a mat that reminded me a lot of like Scythe or... Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Viticulture. Yeah, Viticulture, yeah. Yeah, things like that. Um, really interesting. I, I love deck building, but I don't know if I've ever played a deck building dudes on a map like War Game. Have you guys? Um, <laughs> I just did a situ <laughs> tactics. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about that last week. Yeah, deck yeah. building dudes in a map war games. Yeah, yeah. This yep. looks like 
with the dice drafting and a bunch of other things, I think that this could be a game that I really like. I am yeah. worried that I won't find that many people to play with me, but other than that, yeah. I'm excited about it. It's going to take That's away cool. from your uh, Twilight Imperium playthroughs. Yeah, or my games. Star Wars yeah. Rebellion playthroughs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Twilight Imperium, that's like a once a year maybe game. We've been playing. Not if you're Austin. Yeah. We've been playing on Tabletop <laughs> Simulator, Mark. And well, that's different, though. Because right? you can I save mean, it. We yeah. play across yes. three nights, or if it's a new group, four nights. Um, and it's been great because uh, my wife doesn't hate me for being away for like a whole day. And right, yeah, it, just it for the other out. reasons. Just for the other reasons. Yeah, she hates just for <laughs> Thanks, the normal Thanks reasons. For that. I'm, I'm, yeah, Alana loves you very much. Um, <laughs> another thing I couldn't believe about this is the sixty-nine euro price tag. There yeah, are seems low, right? So seems many like steel things in this not game. that value is just tied to components no no no, no we not. talked about it that last week two weeks ago yes. i can't remember one of the other weeks but it seems like a lot of value for components oh yeah i mean there's 80 miniatures and that alone should be the 70 euro yeah. um okay so wait there's dice throwing there's deck building deck building and, and minis and, and worker, minis. Placement, worker placement kind of, kind of stuff it's not exact. it's yeah. called resource management on the oh, kickstarter okay, page yeah. but it, it has yeah. some like it has that vi- it has that vibe to it right? yeah yeah um, but the minis are great. I really like the minis. Yeah. Really well, and, and dice, any game that has lots of dice, I'll be like, yep. oh, what's this? <laughs> Mark's like, oh, <laughs> dice? And we're like yeah. deck building? So yeah. I mean, maybe we'll get together and play this one weekend, Mark. Yeah, maybe. absolutely. Once, once the uh, the shutdown is over officially. Yep. Um, anyway, really, exciting about, uh, really excited about this. Uh, they are in uh, France. Um, so maybe when we uh, get over to Europe for some conventions next year, we can try to hate, meet up with these guys. But... Really cool. That'd be um, awesome. All right. Let's go to yours, Mark. Um, this oh, is something that yeah. Discord's been really excited about. This is yeah. the Night Cage. So tell us yeah, about which, why you did this. The first thing about it is that it's from Smirk and Laughter, not Smirk and Dagger like you might think. Mm. It's from their more – and I think the reason is because Smirk and Dagger is definitely more of that take that, competitive. This is a cooperative game. So mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. why it's probably under this Mark and Laughter name, I, th- I think. Anyway, uh, but I love the theme of it. It is super dark, but really it, really at, its heart, at its heart, it's an abstract, really. Mm-hmm. But you wake up in the dark with just a candle and you have no idea how you got here. And your candle only illuminates one pathway uh, or one tile away from you. And you could have multiple pathways into those different tiles, but your candle is only bright enough to give you that next uh, adjacent orthogonal uh, view of the of the passageways. Now, some of the passageways are only like T-shaped or or an L. They may not go in all four directions, but um, it'll only illuminate you know where the where there's actual pathway. And mm. what's really cool about this game is that you truly have to work together because there are monsters out here too that can cause your candle to go out. And then you have to move blindly. Oh gosh. And you can't see what's in the next <laughs> tile. And you could land on another monster. And not only that, but there are tiles in this game that crumble and fall away into pits. So yes. after you go over them, they will crumble and turn into a pit. Now, the other neat thing is that it's this weird other reality world that you're in. So the board is infinite top down, bottom left, right, and the Z-axis up and down. It's all infinite. <laughs> so if you fall through a pit, you just fall back through the ceiling um, wow. and so forth. So if a monster, if there's a fully connected pathway across the board and a monster lands there, it can fire all the way through to the other side. Oh, wow. So there's, it's crazy. And the really neat thing about this as well that I love is that there's a stand for the all the tiles, and as you pull the tiles, it simulates the candle getting lower and lower. Oh, oh that's gosh, cool. that's I neat. That. I didn't see right? that. Right? Yeah. That's so cool. And then, not only that, but you run out of tiles, you get down to your last light, and you see if you can make it out. And the goal of the game is to get a key. Everybody has to get their own key, and then they have to find the exit and land there all together and turn their keys to get out. Hmm. So... Uh, that's the goal. And you only have a certain number of keys in that stack. So if you, you have to be careful about, you know, the trade-off about, oh, we won't get that key, but we'll get the next one. Uh, uh, I don't know. Might not be enough. <laughs> yeah. Right. So there's that. And then the, this is the other thing that I love about the game is that as you move into those adjacent paths that you've now illuminated and now your light has left the path behind you and it's maybe two squares away, well, that tile goes out of the game. So if you retrace oh, nice. your steps, it's a whole nother pathway. Oh, that that's shows terrifying. Up. 
<laughs> That's not normal. Yeah. Uh, so I, I have to imagine that like contributes to some of the strategy a little bit too. Like you, you yes. want to stay in a certain spot so that way, like you, you like the the way that the maps unfolded in this area, and then like maybe you can get other people over to you or something like that. I'm really yep. curious how how like the strategy is going to unfold in this one. Um, I thought, it was, yeah, it looks really cool. How do they handle the like multiple depths on just like the one tile? Yeah. So. So obviously moving from the far right to the far left is just doable. You wrap mm -hmm. around. But if you fall through the pit, then your first thing is that you fall through the ceiling and you're on the edge of the board and you get to pick Got it. a row or column that you're going to land on. Okay. And then when your tile, new tile comes out, that's where you're going to be landing. That's so, cool. This game is yeah. classified as like one of the harder games that you'll play, right? Like yeah. So oh, I really? have at least... I have at least eight, at least eight plays in. Oh, wow. and okay. I'm about a 50-50 win ratio so far. Yeah. So I heard, yeah. I heard that they wanted it to be challenging. Um, it is. Absolutely. I mean, like that's that's a part of the fun of it. Like that's, I mean, pandemic really, really hurts when you, especially the legacy version, when you don't yeah. win because then it's like, oh, we have to do that again. But at the same yeah. time, if it was easy, then it would just be like, what are we doing? It doesn't feel like an accomplishment. And the nice thing too, this isn't in, this isn't as long as like a pan, pandemic no. legacy or something. So like, if you fail, it's not like you wasted like two oh, no. hours of your you life. Can you can come feel back awful. to it, and that's they, yeah. they give you just enough to make you go, let's play again. Nice. You know? <laughs> yeah, I think they unlocked a fifth player, didn't they, Mark? Yes, they did. And so the board should be bigger uh, oh, nice. then for, to allow for that. And um, there's also new monsters that and different kind of uh, things that are going to make the game even harder or more of a gamer's game maybe yeah. really is probably the better way to say it. Yeah. Um, What's minimum so, play count? One. Uh, it's Yeah, you can do single player, but there's oh, still nice. four characters in play even with single player. Yeah. So the thing is, is if you go lights out, um, then you and you have some choices it's not just moving throughout the maze you can actually stay put which will still lose a tile out of the game but um okay. it's it's so there's a lot of interesting choices and you've got some you can use your nerve you get like nerve tokens for doing certain things that the nerve can allow you uh to stay put or like when your lights out you're totally scared and you never stop moving at that point mm -hmm. but if you have nerve tokens you can just say no. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna move. <laughs> nice. So I'm not gonna I'm, move blindly into the dark. And when you, your lights are out, you do have the option. Your friends can come save you, if you can come up next to them and a can tile next that they can relight the candle. Oh, yeah. oh, I got it. Yeah. I'm not so. really a big fan of horror games or really the dark right. in general. Awesome. Uh, very scared. Yes. Of many things. <laughs> like my wife has been trying to get me to what's the movie where you have to be quiet or the monsters come and get you. A, a oh quiet yes. Place? The, a quiet place. The quiet place. I'm making yeah. a second one. Yeah, I'm I know. Yes. Uh, I still too. have not seen it. My wife has asked me to watch it at least 10 times. Yeah. Oh, you just have not, to watch it. Man. Just not my kind of thing. John uh, so it's not directorial I love, debut. I love yeah. John. And the thing about it is it's, it's not like, you know, there's a difference in horror, right? It's not, there's suspenseful, tension filled, and that's more what that movie is. Sure. Right? Yeah. It's, it's not, definitely it's not, not like about, Saul. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not, it's not a movie to be gory for the sake yeah. of gore or to be super like evil in some way. Um, you know, something like that. So there's totally. different levels, but I like horror when it is like this game and it, builds tension as you like mm. through the game the tension just builds and builds and uh i love that is there is it possible to like in do you think it's possible to instill fear while playing a video game like you get a video that, like, game oh yeah, uh, no, yeah no no sorry yeah. i, I was board like game. yeah board game, of course no, no. <laughs> literally the game fear is the most like i feel like i don't know it's terrifying. slender man and everything else yeah, yeah no but yeah, i mean right. no board games like is that an emotion that like mm. you have felt playing a, yes. a horror genre game yes before? i have felt scared playing nemesis interesting really um and the reason is is the power was out <laughs> and we were playing with a lantern <laughs> oh that's amazing and that then do this. the host uh actually had a nemesis i don't know if it was a spotify playlist or like <laughs> sanctioned like soundtrack that goes with it but like are you making this up <laughs> no no i literally did this Am I making this up? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who are these people? I have friends you Nick, have that aren't me. No, you need don't. Um, <laughs> anyway, so we were playing in the dark with this soundtrack on like a battery like operated like speaker. And like I was just sitting there for like 10 minutes playing and all of a sudden there's a blood curdling scream on the soundtrack oh, that wow. I did not know was coming. And I jumped 
I mean, it was not a pleasant experience. But like that, <laughs> a lot of games are coming out with like soundtracks and like accompanying yeah, like ambience the, yeah. things. I mean, that definitely helps. I love that so and much. It, it gets you in the feeling of I'm in a spaceship with an alien. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And yeah, it was it was really great. Uh, thanks, Stephen, for letting me come over and play that with you. Yeah, Stephen. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about you, Mark? Like, would you say no, that you've? It's it's. I like. I liked being immersed into the game, but I can't say that I've been scared. But yeah. I'm also never really scared in scary movies. Okay, okay. I'm so always like, why challenge. are these people? Yeah, why are these people so dumb? They should just not, <laughs> you know. That's don't go the in the first basement. Thing that comes, I'm like, you just don't go down there. Yeah. You leave. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So um, I'm super critical when it comes to those type of movies. I don't really get scared, but I do love the tension though that you can get like mm-hmm. you know uh, don't go in there you know but it's not a scare it's more of that tension feel yeah and i get I i've had that in games for sure yeah that tension so. of like oh we have to draw this card and it has to be this like yes. that's different than scared but like that's the tension is, yeah or like i i don't know why i keep going back to pandemic today but like when you have to flip that card over and you know it's an epidemic and you're like don't be yeah. an epidemic don't be an epidemic like that's a big tension moment for me totally oh yeah, yeah. there's like Absolutely. there's tension there's stress but i don't know if there's ever been fear i think that'd be yeah. amazing yeah if you could figure that out. The Just last, go to Stephen's house. The last the time that out. I could say, yeah, the last time I could say I was actually kind of fearful in a game would be a video game that I was playing with my daughter <laughs> Perfect. We, were, we were we were playing uh that alien isolation game and yep. it had just yep. just come out on the xbox one right and the, the i didn't terrifying. real i didn't realize that the alien could actually hear me <laughs> wait, wait what there's yes. a set, like when you have a mic <laughs> oh you kidding me like the actual no, mic I'm in not the game? kidding yeah. yes so it's yeah, you know the the xbox's um uh, sensory input device whatever it's called i can't think of it um, uh, the connect the connect yeah. yeah so uh for the, i have the original xbox one so it still had that right nice. so we're, i'm in a i'm in a locker hiding from the alien and shelby and i are talking and the alien finds us. We're like, what is happening? And so that's the last time I can actually remember like feeling some fear in a game is from that one because it was this yeah. sudden like next dimensional thing happening in a game where uh, the alien can actually pick up on where we were. I that's amazing. I, I've been playing uh, Half-Life, Half-Life Alex. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. With the VR and this is a new level of of fear in the gaming experience. So like I he hurt himself. I oh my spoilers, gosh. Spoilers, jeez. No, I didn't hurt myself. But okay, there there was this moment where it's like everything's dark and you got a flashlight in one hand and you got your shotgun in another hand. And like I like I got into fight or flight so much as like shotgun, flashlight, like I have two two shells in my shotgun and the the reload mechanics are in, intense. You press a button, you got to pull something out from your back, you got to slide it in and then you got to cock it. And like you just learned this mechanic and you got two shells in your shotgun and then three zombies appear. And like my my flight reflex, like fight or flight reflex one time was was so like I felt like I was there and I was literally going to die. There were two like headhunters that flew at me and I, I squeezed the trigger so hard that my arm literally cramped up because oh. I was in like such a <laughs> like, I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. I, they're just like, you love they, they got me I good. Need, oh, it is I my favorite game. This. Yeah. It, you, you seriously must. It is it, it like change it like flipped the script for me on vr in general like before i was just like ah it's kind of gimmicky no this is like so are we it is amazing is our game after this next one going to be a game where you get so tense that you cramp up your arm <laughs> while you're holding so. your cards uh, you literally feel like you're going to die i don't know if we yep. should make that game that might be a bad idea speaking of games we've made uh we have a fun little fun little picture for you guys um, we do this is the moonrakers games on pallets Oh man! Which means look at that. They are being shipped. Look at the little eye. Not to you yet. There. They're just going on the big boats. But that is a huge step for us, and we will be updating you with a schedule soon that talks about those ship schedules and all of that things. But we're just really excited to be at this moment. Of <sighs> the games yeah. are no longer being made. They're made. They're in route now, uh, and that's that's a really really fun moment. Um, Mark, obviously, you've gotten to be a part of this journey the whole yeah. way. And, and super excited. I'm excited that you're here today when we announced that they're actually yeah. kind of in route now. Um, it's going to be awesome. And it's it's just, I'm so excited to actually hold the final 
finished product. Because yep. even us, like we have the prototypes of like, or it's called mass production copies. Yeah. But right. they're they're not final. They haven't been clim- acclimatized. They're not from the mass production lines. So we're gotcha. getting the final games soon. Yeah, I'm so excited. That's exciting. Yeah. We'll have to do some big like. Um, Unboxing with Becca and yeah, I'm down. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. That sounds great. Maybe we can mix that with like a preview of our next game. Um, Ooh, that would be fun. Next game. Next, next game. game. <laughs> speaking of next game. Speaking of next. Do you game. want to do that, Zach? So I don't mess it up. Oh, I don't. I don't even know. What okay, I'm, speaking I'm, of next game. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm working on the website right now. During yeah, it's the right show. there. You can't even see it. Um, um, we're announcing it tomorrow on social media. Is that right, Sam? Well, no, no, Just give me a thumbs up. Oh, right. We're taping the day this, before. Yeah, yeah. We, it's free taped. Oh, okay. Today. When you watch this, we yes. probably will have already tweeted, Facebooked, Discorded, Instagrammed. Yeah. It the, will be out. The name that I did not say last time on the camera of this show. <laughs> the camera yes. of this show. That's a good thing to we say. We are very excited. That, we, we've, got some, we've got some We've got some very Mark. fun <laughs> promo ideas this time around. So Ooh, watch. I don't even know if I told carefully. Mark about this yet. Yeah. We have some we have some fun things that you will want to be on the lookout for. Um, well, I could say that I've seen some of the artwork and such, so I'm pretty excited to see this game. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm very thankful for your advice because we we sent Mark yeah. two art styles and we're like, which one do you like? And he was like, hands down, the I was, yep. one. I was losing sleep over it. Yeah, and Mark, <laughs> you gave me peace. You, that's good. Because <laughs> we were in yeah, agreement. For me. So, yeah. Oh yeah. No, no. I was like, I don't. The whole the team was split, and like I had a ah. I got reaction of which way I should go, and I was like. We're going to send this to Mark. And then secretly, nice. I'm like, I just really hope he validates my opinion. And you did. Uh, <laughs> you both chose the same one. Yeah, so. man, I'm telling you, it was no contest for me. I'm like, yep, boom, this is the one. Nice. So, so yeah, I mean, you'll be able, I think you'll actually be able to see the artwork uh, that we're, we're talking about. That, that's going to be some that's of our first uh, first kind of early looks at some of the art style of this, this new game. Uh, the website is up. Get a little bit of, uh, you know, see player count, all that stuff. So, so go, go check it out. Go, go, go find it. Yeah, yeah, do that. Anything else you want to say about IV in general? Uh, no, I, I don't Sweet. think so. We're, we're doing. We're, we're working so hard on this new game. So. Oh, you know what? I'm excited. I forgot. What What did you forget? Mark, you'll find Ooh. this interesting oh, too. Yeah, you your favorite a, your favorite thing in the world. Yeah. Well, okay. I wish so we should have sent one to him. These are so called could, table destroyers. That's not what they're called. What? What's this? Uh, these are hematite moonrakers uh, oh. hazard dice. Oh so, man, I need the, that. Oh, that one's gone. Got to get another it's one. Gone forever. Let's see. You just following suit from yeah, what I did. Yeah, <laughs> just chucked it. Uh, chucked it. So level up dice made us uh, these incredible little hematite dice oh, for man. Moonrakers. Um, I need those. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll send you a set. Um, right. These aren't. You can't buy these anywhere yet. We're not really sure what we're going to do with them yet. They'll be available later after the game launches. But oh, for now, tease. we're just playing them. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Playing with them because it, also you're gonna need a dice tray. You don't want to roll this on your mom's kitchen let's table. See. Let's see. Definitely not. I was really That's scared you were bad. gonna roll that on your laptop. I mean, I don't see it, Dan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just break yeah. my MacBook real quick. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> they are pretty heavy. If you they haven't held heavy. a hematite dice before, they're really fun. But you they're definitely yeah. don't roll them on glass tables. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. What, what's your What's your preferred dice material, Mark? <laughs> That's a oh big my gosh. question. <laughs> That's a huge question. I don't know that I have one because I'm, I'm, I'm like our next episode like, about right. uh, dice types. I love dice. I have so much, so many dice. It's crazy, but I just it's one of those things that it's not really a material thing. It's more mm. of like, ooh, those look awesome. Pretty. Okay. You know. Those so, um, and I I do like the stone. I like a lot of the different stones. I like. Um, I like d- dice that are weighty, you know, heavier. Ooh, uh, so we got news like for you. Weight. We got <laughs> some hefty dice right here. Yep. Um, it feels more like you're doing something. Oh yeah, it that's does. so true. That's I mean, that's why we did metal coins in Moonraker yeah. too. It's right. just oh, like yeah. it doesn't it doesn't hurt to spend plastic tokens to lose right. those metal coins that you've been clicking around the whole time. Sad, you don't want to spend really? those things. Yeah, yeah right. Um, yeah, these dice, um, we'll, we'll post some pictures on social media about these soon, but, um, level up dice makes great dice just in general for, for any game, D and D especially, but not a paid promo, not a paid promo. Yeah. This is completely paid. <laughs> paid. Um, it wasn't, okay. it wasn't, um, <laughs> but, uh, we were at their booth at one of the cons. Pax. I can't remember. No, I think it was, um, the one we did in Atlanta. What was that? Oh no. My brain is broken. Yeah. Oh no! Uh, Dreamhack. Dreamhack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were at Dreamhack with them, and 
I just went over to their booth and was like, could you guys make these in hematite? And they're like, yeah, easily. And I was like, oh, that's incredible. Boom. So, yep, yeah. we'll, we'll post some pictures of these. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to- So we're not you. selling them? We are. I just don't know when yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. And how much they will be? Yeah, at least a dollar. Many dozens but less of than a hundred dollars. Many, many dozens of dollars. Yes. yes. Yeah. I don't know how much they'll cost yet. They weren't cheap they look, to make. They look great <laughs> next to the the metal ship tokens, though. Oh, that is true. They do look nice so. next to the metal ship tokens. All right. Well, without going any further on the topic of hematite dice, we should probably wrap this episode up. Maybe, yeah. So, uh, Mark, people, people want to go look at our new game website. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Do Let that. Them go. Yeah, don't, yeah, stop watching this video. Yeah, don't yeah. even watch the end of it. Go look at the new website for our next game. For some reason, I'm still not allowed to say the name of it. Because we want them to go find it. I but how can they find it if they don't know the name of it? They don't know the name of it. You're going to have to look at our social media. You have Google. to look at our social media. media. But they can't Google a game name they don't know the name of, Zach. Is this is I'm, valid. Look at our this social media. It's going to be at IV Games. On some places, you can also look at at Moonrakers. We're going to be posting it there. Sam's shaking his head because we didn't get at IV games everywhere, but it's some places at IV games. It's nowhere at IV games. What, <laughs> what? is the actual URL then? Or play, the, play IV games? At play it's IV at, games. At play IV games. Uh, okay. We don't even know our own social channels. I might be fired after this. <laughs> um, Mark. Thank you so much for being yeah, here. Yeah, of course. For hanging out with us for an hour or oh, so. Oh, this was fun. Um, Thank you for having me. I really yeah, appreciate it. I hope it. this is the first time of many times. We're going to have you back for some yes. bigger stuff later this year. So, yes. Um, yeah, awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep the conversation going, and thanks for yeah. uh, thanks for being our friend. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks, Zach. Yeah. I think yeah. We're going to end it just like that. Uh, <laughs> smash. This is your line. So, yeah, smash that like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> it's so so terrible uh, please let us know if you have any thoughts around previews and reviews that we didn't touch on or if you're yeah, just playing definitely. a new game or uh, playing a new game or we missed something on Kickstarter that you're excited about we'd love to hear from you and uh, yeah we'll see you next week yeah later